This right here? This is you. This is you. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and today I want to talk about physical fitness and why being physically ripped during post SHTF uh, or after a collapse could actually possibly get you killed. Um, I'm making this video because I saw a Canadian prepper video recently. Um, it was an excellent video. It's called Mad Max Fitness Training, something along those lines. Great video, great message. Canadian prepper in general has an awesome channel. Uh, I highly recommend you check him out. Um, but if you're watching my video, I'm sure you already know about Canadian prepper. And he doesn't need any. Uh, he doesn't need me advocating for him. He's got a great channel. Um, but uh, what I wanted to do is add kind of a layer to his video because his video. Um, uh, talked about just different fitness, uh, you know, programs you can do, and you know, sort of some of the benefits that are, you know, uh, waiting there for you post SHTF if you can, if you can be fit. Um, but I feel like there's kind of an overtone when you when you see a, a Canadian prepper or somebody similar looking to him. Uh, they look ripped, you know, uh, they're, they're the kind of person that looks like they could possibly beat up your car. Uh, I think when you see a video from someone like that um, about this topic, the, there's kind of a sense that. Um, one of the important parts of uh, uh, being physically fit is to have that sort of physical intimidation factor for post SHTF. And that's a real thing. I mean, honestly, let's say you've got a hankering for candy and uh, you're a morally unscrupulous individual, and there's me and there's Canadian Prepper. Let's say we're both holding up a lollipop. Whose lollipop are you going to try for? <laughs> you know, again. Canadian prepper looks like you could beat up your car. You're not going to steal his lollipop. You're going to come after me. So there's a benefit to being physically intimidating like that. And I get that. I understand that. I, I'm, I'm a, a smaller, lighter weight guy. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I recognize that this video could sound like me being like, oh, well, there's no need for that. You know, as long as, long as we, you know, uh, you know, can read, then that's all we need. And that's not what I'm advocating for at all. I, I see the benefit in that. Um, but I, th I feel like people grossly overfixate on that. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, there's a Hollywood stereotype of the, the, the physically fit, surviving, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, manly individual. Uh, there's, you know, so the Sylvester Stallones, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers. I'm 40, so, you know, <laughs> those are the people when I grew up. They, I know for anyone young now, those are like, those are old dudes, dude. Like, why are you mentioning them? I'm sure there's physically fit actors today. What's the guy? The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. There you go. That kind of thing. Uh, there's that kind of uh, that, that kind of idea that uh, you know the action movie star who survives and and, and everything. And I feel like that um, is a little bit misleading to uh, from the reality of of what it's really like in a post collapse situation. And the obvious next question is like, well, what the hell do I know about? You know, I live in you know my, you know present day New England. Like, what what do I know about post collapse? Well, I know from what I, I, I research and I, and I and I see. Let's take some real examples of places that have had a collapse. Here's a picture of some guys from Afghanistan. They're fighters. I don't know whether they're horrible people or heroes or if they're on our side, whatever the hell that means lately, uh, or not. These are just some fighters in Afghanistan. What do they look like? You know, are they ripped? Are their are their biceps tearing through their their shirts? No, they look physically fit. They look like they can carry their gear. They look like they can probably run around. In the picture, it looks like they're pretty exhausted from a hard day's work, uh, which is what post-SHTF, I think, is going to be like. A lot of hard day's work, one after another. Let's look at another picture. This is some people that have never, um, they're not post-SHTF, they just have never been in an industrial society. This is the Maasai tribe from, uh, from Africa. Um, these are people you don't want to mess with. They, they, one of their rites of passage is that they kill a, a kill a lion pretty much barehanded. I think they use a spear or something like that. You know, but you don't want to dick around with these people. You don't want to be stealing their lollipops. God damn it! <laughs> what do they look like? If anything, you'd almost describe them as scrawny. And what does that mean? What it means is that their their body form is customized to that type of living, that hard work, day in and day out sort of living. Um, you know, I said earlier that uh, you know I wouldn't. There is a definite benefit to being ripped, but there, there's also a downside to it, and it, especially during an SHF situation. I'll explain what I mean on that. Um, let's say uh, you are of the mindset that you need to stay physically ripped. You need to be that Dwayne Johnson guy that nobody, nobody's going to want to mess with. Um, and it's post-SHTF. You're going to have a tendency of wanting to you know, work out. 
they're going to maybe be eating more calories than you would otherwise need to uh, to keep up that physical form. If you end up eating more than maybe you need to, you run the risk of possibly running out of food. You could be draining resources from other people in your family to do that. Um, and again, there's a benefit to being physically intimidating, but it also comes at a cost. And post-SHTF, that cost might be higher than it's prudent to, to pay at that point. And that, that, that's where I say uh, it's important to focus on what the, the true benefit of physical fitness is, which is to be able to do the daily tasks that are in front of you every day post-SHTF. During my like normal days here, I try to do as much as I can off-grid. When I'm doing construction projects, I'm doing them manually. When I'm digging a, uh, a fallout shelter recently, every shovel came up just manually pulling it up. Every boulder manually pulled up out of there. No, no power tools, no power equipment. Um, that's physically taxing to do. Um, and uh, I, for my own personal uh, story, the past couple of years have been a little crazy. We've had some family SHTF situations. I'm a single dad now. Uh, and um, that's left me with a little bit less time to work out. My, my muscle mass has come down over those past couple of years. And just recently doing projects, I get injured more because I'm not, I, I hadn't been keeping up uh, that, that physical fitness level. Um, so, uh, uh, recently building a shed a couple years ago, um, I was mixing bags of cement by hand, 80-pound like 80, 80 bags of cement. This elbow here was tweaked for like a, a year and a half. I, I, I couldn't do, I could do pull-ups, which is one of my favorite exercises. I could do pull-ups, but every time I did them, I retweaked the elbow and I was like, oh, I, I want to exercise, but I can't without hurting myself anymore. It's one of the reasons I got this. This is a great machine. It's the Bowflex, kind of a cheesy machine back from the 90s, I remember the te television commercials for them. But it's great because I can do just a very small amount of weight I can, so I can keep getting some exercise while I am recovering from all the injuries <laughs> that I'm uh, incurring doing all this off-grid sort of uh, living. And that's a penalty that I paid for letting my body slip into not being quite so physically fit while I was dealing with other SHTF sorts of situations. Um, but I'm meandering at this point. My point is uh, that it's important to focus on the reason for physical fitness. And the reason for physical fitness, while yes, it's great to be physically intimidating and uh, th there's a benefit there, the more important reason is to be able to do the daily, day in, day out kind of work that you need to do uh, post SHTF. It's probably lifting things, moving things, rolling things, carrying things, a lot of carrying things. It's probably even running, running from somebody <laughs> that you gotta get away from, running to, after someone that you need to catch. Um, you know, that's where the cardio comes in and everything. But again, um, exercise is fun. Uh, it's, you know, it's wonderful. Uh, it has a lot of benefits to it. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind the goal. And the goal is the fitness and the ability to do the work post-SHGF. In terms of post-SHGF fitness, there's lots of other benefits to it, you know, pre-SHGF. But this is a post-SHGF collapse channel, and that's what we're talking about today. What do you think about that? Am I just some, like, thin guy that's just like, eh, 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 you don't need any of that because I don't have it? <laughs> uh, or is there some, some sense to that, that um, we need to focus on the actual reason for the fitness, uh, the day-in, day-out types of jobs that are actually going to require it and not get sidelined by imagining ourselves as, you know, post-apocalyptic warriors with, you know, biceps so big that we're banging ourselves in the, what's the most absurd thing I could say right now? Banging yourself in the, I haven't got anything, I'm sorry. I, I know I try to weave some humor into the channel now and then, but that's just a joke that went nowhere. Bang ourselves in the what? No, this is not funny, I'm sorry. This video could have ended like 30 seconds sooner. Thanks for watching.